Um, no, sir, on that half, um, the offense, we really beat ourselves. Uh, we, never, we, we never really got going, and uh, they capitalized when we didn't. Was it more like self-inflicted mistakes? Really like a yes. Yes, most definitely. Uh, I know me personally, I made two mistakes early in the game that probably cost us um, a lot of momentum in the beginning. And um, as a team, you know, we just didn't make the plays that we needed to make. We didn't make the routine plays, and it, it came back to bite us tonight. How do you all rebound from here? I mean, this game is over. It's behind me as of now. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's behind the rest of the guys as well. We'll probably start tomorrow focusing on Texas State. What do you learn from a game like this? Um, you can't start slow. Uh, you know, you can't beat yourself. And usually when you come out, you start slow. A team like that, pretty good team, they expose you. So just, you know, what we learn is – we cannot beat ourselves. You know, even if we were the better team tonight, it didn't show. They played harder, you know, they outplayed us, they deserved it. Kenny, I know the talk this week is gonna cancel the off the noise and everything. Do you think maybe the rankings and the high pro profile game maybe got to some of the guys a little bit? I don't I don't think so. I mean, it was a big stage tonight. Um I think it was more so just we wasn't as ready as they was coming off, you know, starting and it bit us. Like I said, we had the game was 73 up to halftime, and they came out, got a fumble. So we had every opportunity to, you know, change the game around. We just didn't. We didn't capitalize, and that hurt us. For the whole season, kind of talking about a young receiving core and you being the leader of them, uh, you led everybody with 10 receptions. How did everybody else kind of not be able to perform that high? Well, it's, some games you get one, some games you get five, some you may get 10, you know, some you may get none. So it really, the ball finds you, and when it finds you, you know, you just got to be ready for it. Did y'all learn anything from the level of intensity that they got? You know, them being the defending Sun Belt champions, that, you know, something other that maybe could elevate your play next year? Well, I mean, like Coach said, uh, being that they'll probably win it again this year, if you want to be the champions, you got to beat the champions. And tonight they came in here to defend the champions and leaving the champions again. So that's what we got to learn. You want to beat them, you got to beat them. How do you guys in the locker room just look at this as we still have so much to play for? We're two games left in the season. They're possibly a 10 win season in those two games. I mean, that game, it ruined our chances of one of our goals, but we still have a lot of our goals in front of us, you know, with the bowl game and that type of stuff. So we can't let a good, you know, a deep win like this get to us too much. We still have two games left, uh, bowl eligible. We still can finish 10-2. and two. And, I mean, hey, this is just one game that we didn't get. Do you think the short week with the late kick and not a lot of days in between your last game kind of catch up to you guys? I don't think so. I mean, they, they, had, they was in the same position we was in, you know, and they had to drive six, seven hours to get here. So if anything, it benefited us more than it did them. They were just ready, more prepared to play than we was tonight. Do you think with the ranking and everything made them a little more prepared for this game? I'm pretty sure. Uh, once you crack the rankings like that, um, especially for them, you know, they probably felt bad because they were, you know, the underdogs coming into the game. So they kind of took that to heart and they came in playing horses. So we just didn't match their level of intensity tonight. I really shut them down in the first half. Did they what did they change between the first and second on? Uh, really, they didn't change much. You know, we just didn't take advantage of the plays being made. You know, uh, we had a, a bad night of tackling. You know, that's one thing that we that we wouldn't do in the second half. You know, make, missing tackles that really hurt us defensively. So, and you know, they just found the end zone for all the missed tackles. Did fatigue kind of play a factor down the stretch? Uh, I wouldn't say fatigue. You know, played a big factor. It's just you know, assignment alignment kind of thing. You know. I was in the wrong place, and we had a lot of a lot of MA, a lot of missed assignments, and so especially you know those plays turned into big plays. So you know that kind of hurt of us defensively. How do y'all recover? Sir. How do y'all recover from that? Uh, prepare. You know uh, that game didn't make or break us. You know we have two more games left. Uh, you just gotta come strong next week. Prepare. You know each and every day is the grind. You just gotta prepare because you know that game didn't make or break our season, and we still can finish strong. I don't know if you're on the field for the fake pump, but was that a momentum shifter that kind of? Oh, I was a big momentum shifter. You know, it's, it's fourth down and short. You know, you get a first down, move the sticks, you know, get your, chance, your offense a chance to uh, keep rolling. So, you know, that, that was a big momentum shift, and it, it really hurt us. It was a tough pill to swallow, you know, but, you know, it just took advantage of the plays being made. What can you learn uh, from this uh, moving into the last two games? Um, we just got to finish. You know, that's a big thing. We, just, we want to finish strong, you know. Like, that win took a lot out of some guys. You know, I feel like, you know, those guys didn't play as hard as they could, could have in the second half. And, you know, we just want to push those guys to finish because, you know, we, we still have a, a great shot of 
doing something special, you know. That one loss didn't make or break our season, like I was just saying, and we just have to finish. Do you think the hype surrounding this game and the national attention and everything might affect some of the players out there tonight? Um, I wouldn't think so because, you know, we, we look at it just the next game. And, you know, you look at in this game, like those rankings and um, who you play, it really don't, doesn't matter. It's just the next game. We, you just want to be one note each and every week. And, you know, we came up short tonight. Can they do anything differently defensively that you guys have planned for? Uh, no, they did the same thing we planned out. We just didn't execute. You know, we didn't make plays when, you know, when we needed to. You know, we just execute. We didn't do none of that stuff in the first half. And uh, we just killed ourselves. You know, we gave them two fumbles. You know, in the first half, and we just didn't play our, you know, our top, top way football. And uh, they just, they just beat us tonight. They got us. How difficult of a loss is this for this team? I mean, yeah, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna be too good. But you know, tomorrow, sun's still gonna rise. We're still gonna be eight and two tomorrow. I mean, one loss. If you lose by one, lose by thirty, what two? Still one loss. Still eight and two. I mean, no one expected us to be eight and two at this point in the season. So. You know, we're still, you know, we're still bowl eligible. You know, we still have our, our mindset of winning the last two conference games to get us to 10 to two and then whatever bowl game we get into. So that's just the model. You just got to move past it and uh, just have a great, great week of practice next week going into Texas State. Who are the ones in the locker room to kind of pick everybody up after that? Uh, you know, we just all are. You know, we're just all, everybody's sad in there. You know, you never want to get beat like that in front of your home crowd, especially where they packed the stands tonight and stayed laid up. You know, and uh, we just all, you know, picked each other up. You know, it wasn't just one person. It wasn't just three people. It was like the whole team type deal. You know, we just got to get, we know what we know is at stake. You know, we got to get back to practice Sunday and uh, Monday and, you know, go for all from there. The, uh, what can you learn from a game like this? Since they're the defending some of the championships that you can take into next year for next year's conference. Uh, yeah, um, you know, we just got to learn, you know, in big games, you don't have to make such big plays. You know, you just got to execute the small plays. And the small plays turn into big plays, you know. We just didn't, we just didn't execute like a, we just didn't execute at all tonight. Emmanuel said you guys came out flat. What, what in your mind, what causes the team like this to come out and play? Flat? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, first play was a fumble, but we we've, we've done that before this season yeah, against Idaho, and we still we won that game pretty handily. But um, we, just, and after that, I don't, we just didn't get in a groove. You know, we usually you see us go up tempo, just getting first downs at the first downs. We just didn't get any groove tonight, and you know, I think that's what's the most part. We're only getting held by three points. We've taken a lot of losses over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Is this program in a better place to handle and process a loss and move on than it was even two, a year ago? Oh yeah, no doubt. You know, we're actually playing for something this year. You know, the first two years I've been, you know, quarterback losing like that. You know, at the end of the season, like you know, have, we haven't been in a spot to you know to reach a bowl game. So, uh, you know, this team knows what's at stake. You know, we know we know we have to win. You know, we, we know we're already bowl eligible. We're obviously not ranked no more, but, you know, we, you know, we still got to win the last two games. It gives us a 10-2. I don't know when's the last time we had double-digit wins at Troy. So uh, that's what we're working on. And now working on getting a good groove going into the bowl game. You said on Monday one of the best things about this team is that we can run and pass. But they shut down Jordan for 51 yards. How much pressure did that put on you? Uh, no pressure. You know, like I, like I said always, you know, it's not just a running team. It's not just a passing team. We're all a whole offense. You know, if we don't do good, it's all of our faults. It's not just one person's fault. You know, I mean, we just, it's all the, it's all one offense. Like I've been like I've been saying all year. It's just that's how we're good. You know, we just weren't good tonight. Do you think the attention and the national spotlight affected any of the players tonight? No, no, not at all. You know, it's just a game. You know, we weren't thinking, oh, just because we're top 25 on a 25 ranked team, AP poll that we, you know. Really nothing. I didn't think about it. You know, we're just trying to go beat Ark State. What does it say about the type of player that Jordan is? Coach said he didn't practice all week. He's pretty banged up, giving it a go tonight. Oh, yeah. He's a tough guy, you know. He had a little rest, you know, short week. You know, he's pretty banged up. He had 31 carries against a great uh, App State defense. So, uh, you know, he's a little banged up, but, you know, he, he worked through it. You know, he's, he's a big boy. He's a tough guy. Coach said Jabir's out for the rest of the season with torn ACL. What was he to this program? It was just a pressure. Oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, it's, it's a spark plug for us. You know, speedy guy, and we kept on all year trying to get him the ball. You know, it sucks. I had to go out there, you know, first one of the first plays of the first quarter, man. I feel for that guy. He's one of my good buddies, and um, you know, hopefully he has a great uh, recovery, and he's be he'll be back uh, soon. You mentioned having fans stay for the whole game. Uh, that's very rare here for Troy, especially mm -hmm. the last few years. 
for you guys on the team, how great was it to see them here, you know, still in the fourth quarter cheering? Oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, that's, it's been a big part, you know, of us, you know, winning is our student section. You know, they stayed. You know, the game was blown out, you know, 35-3, and there's people still up in the stands. And uh, I just really, you know, I wish we would have put on a better performance for them guys, but I'm so proud of them for staying out late. You know, even, you know, first two years I was quarterback, they, we would be winning and they leave at halftime. It's just so as much change how much winning does for your program and for them to stay like that. Uh, you still found Emmanuel for 10 times today for over what was 117 yards. Uh, talk about the connection that you guys have just built. Yeah, we just always had a connection. Um, you know, a few back shoulder throws. You know, they, the first one, you know, I didn't complete it, but I still kept on going to him. You know, I'm always going to go to Emmanuel. I'm always going to go to DeAndre. I'm always going to go to all those other receivers. And, uh, you know, we just had a connection tonight and just with the back shoulder on the go route. So, uh, you know, it was good.